There it is. What's up, nerds? Welcome back to another episode of the Aggressively Average Anglers podcast. We're coming to you live another Wednesday, and we've got a guest. Look at us go. Normally, it's just Paul and me, which is super boring. You guys have to look at Paul's face all day. Uh, so we have an amazing guest here tonight to talk about some amazing baits that we didn't know existed. Uh, and when we found them, we absolutely fell in love. So we're hanging out tonight with Dan Miguel from Great Lakes Finesse. Dan, how you doing, man? Really good. Really good. A little tired, burnt out. We just did a huge product release and I've been going on not a lot of sleep. So <laughs> I <Yeah>. bet. <laughs> But it's been it's been a lot of fun. A lot of it has to do with I just can't sleep because I'm so excited right now. If I'm being That's awesome. Really yeah. Yeah, I am excited too. We actually the craziest thing is you guys dropped the product on our doorstep. So I saw the video and then I walked because I was on a trip to Mexico. So I, I like watched the video when I was coming back. I was like, Oh, they dropped a new product. That's awesome. I walked to the door <laughs> when we got home and I was like, and it's here. I've oh, never perfect. been that pumped before in my life. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to be talking about that tonight. Uh, and I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And I also, you know, Paul, you're here, too. How you doing, man? What's going on? Doing I haven't seen fantastic. you. <laughs> it's been it's been a minute. So I was in Mexico. I was in Florida and we came back. We fished. Then I went to Mexico, which was amazing. Uh, and yeah, this weekend, the weather is not what I was hoping for, but maybe we fish, maybe we build kayaks. I don't know. We, we got a lot of things that we could be doing. What do you say? Should we, I say we have to fish? pack up some giveaway packs. That's actually my oh number my one gosh. priority. My number two, 32 of them. I have, I have like a whole new forward facing yeah. sonar set up to get on my kayak. It's literally in the garage. Yeah. Uh, and it's just been very cold. So I haven't gotten to get everything set up yet. So. I've got like 10,000 other things that need to be done and none of it's getting done. So it might yeah. be another construction weekend. We'll see. I have a Bixby motor that we're supposed to both be testing out. Yeah, so needless nice. to say, things need to get done. Uh, before we get into the show tonight, you guys, uh, first of all, thanks for hanging out. We love you guys. Thanks for being here. Uh, send out, you know, uh, make sure your notifications are on. But if any of your fish and friends are not in chat, maybe send the link, invite them in so they can hang out with us tonight. Because uh, you're going to learn a lot of cool stuff from Dan. I've, I've had the pleasure of talking to Dan on the phone a few times. I learned a ton every time I talk to him. And then these guys are dropping amazing products. So we're going to be talking about that as well. Uh, I want to just real quick point this out. In June, we have the kayak adventure series up in Whitehall, Michigan. So if anybody wants to come, uh, you know, just hang out, maybe catch some fish, maybe win the average award, maybe win the micro bag from Z man. There's a lot of cool stuff going on with this event. So definitely check it out. I will have a link in our description and we'll be talking about it a lot in the weeks coming up and I will be there. Paul will not be there but I will be. So the better half of aggressively average will be hanging out. So if you guys want to have some fun, come hang out with me. Uh, other than that, if you guys are listening to the pod, drop a five star wherever you listen to this thing and uh, smash that like button. All right, Paul, let's get into it. All right. So we got our fun question. Uh, this one's just, there's no wrong answer. Uh, no judgment whatsoever. Um, you get one rod, reel and line combination. I don't care about brand. You can specify if you have one. It's going to stay fresh forever. Like it just all came out of the box. Perfect forever. But it's the only one that you get to use for the rest of time. I already know. I bet you Hit do. Me. <laughs> so 7.6, medium, light, fast action, a 2,500 series spinning reel with five pound test braid, six pound test fluoro. And I'll even go bait, sneaky underspin with a drop minnow. And that's it. Yeah. <laughs> for, the rest, for the rest of your life. I what love color? that. color? What color? Uh, I would probably do the OG, which is like, um, it's this color. Just if I was only fishing smallmouth, it would be this black one. Oh, um, yeah. But if I'm going for everything, so walleye, perch, panfish, yep. brook trout, whatever, I'm going to go uh, this guy right here paired with this drop minnow. Oh, and, God. Uh, it's, it's the lake vacuum. That's my nickname for it. Um, <laughs> Awesome. It it will literally like if I'm going to a new body of water and I have no idea what's in it, that's what I'm yeah, throwing, yeah. and I'll know what's in there pretty soon. Um, right. I'm not kidding. It, it's it's in, like the guys who know know, and it, it it literally is a lake vacuum. It's so easy to fish, and uh, catches everything everywhere we go. It's funny you say that combo because that's all not the line, but that's almost exactly the first thing that I threw it on. Okay, sneaky, seven understand. four. Yeah, yeah. 
It was a seven okay. four. A seven four is good. A seven four is good. It's, like, it's all right. It's trash. I wouldn't use it, but it's fine. <laughs> Look, I mean, you're asking for were like if it was specifically for smallmouth, I'm going like probably a little a little longer even. Yeah. Um, but just an overall like for walleye, bass, whatever I'm gonna be fishing yep. for, it's gonna be that seven six medium light fast nice. action. Yeah. Jeff, what would you pick? I mean, if we're talking to the smallmouth guy and I'm doing the smallmouth thing, I would cop okay. out and do what he said. But for us, for like what we generally do, yeah. um, I, I mean, I would, again, we don't care about the the brand that it is. I'm probably picking the bait casting combo just because like I really like to do that. Uh, hard to give up. It is really hard to give up. I know that you can like straight up and you can. <laughs> it's possible. I'm sure someone can do it. it it's totally possible. <laughs> if anybody can do it, Dan can do it. because well, Dan catches, just did it. He catches giants all the time. Uh, yeah, so I mean, I'd be doing the uh, what would have been thrown around lately the seven four medium uh, mod fast with a bait casting reel, and it would probably for the all around setup, it's going to be like the 20 pound test, uh, to the 10 pound test fluorocarbon leader. The mod, the mod fast, the chatterbait combo, the math, the mod <laughs> fast is such a cheat code because it lets yeah. you do so much yeah. more. So true. Yep. I, that that would be my answer too. Pretty, I, almost I figured it would be yours. You got yeah. those are my top two. You can honestly yep. you could throw a dart, and I don't think I'd be mad either way. Well, I'd be furious yeah. either way, but I'd be fine either way as well. Yeah. Good yep. answers. All right. So we're gonna get let's get into the let's get into the now you guys know what you're dealing with. And Dan, Dan, let the people know where you're fishing out of because I've I can already see in the comments that people are so mad. Pipe man has already said, is he speaking another language? What is the spinning rail? So like <laughs> people are confused. <laughs> so let people know where you're fishing. I think that might answer some questions as well. Yeah. So um, I'm up in the uh, Great Lakes region. Um, fish a lot of the Great Lakes, primarily targeting smallmouth. I'm, I'm a tournament bass angler. So that's that's where my passion lies is I love fishing, but I also love competing. Um, fish for walleye, panfish like crappies, mm -hmm. whatever, um, pretty much anything that swims. But when it's bass season, I'm, I'm going for bass. So. Still going for largemouth, but up here, um, water's pretty clear. And there's also a lot of pressure on the areas that the bigger fish hang out, hang out, hang out in. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of a finesse fisher. That like the more I, the more I go to smaller and smaller baits, the, the smaller I want to go. Actually, as I see more success with it, so. So on that note, we got to help the. This is, we got to say it louder for the folks in the back. Uh, on this this spinning combo with this finesse gear how <laughs> how big a fish could one maybe catch because uh you know the haters are going to say dinks only but what what's like what are you catching on this setup well um we broke the record on the st lawrence river for the biggest five bass limit ever weighed there 32 and a half pounds um last year that's all right that was, that was a six and a half pound basically a 6.4 pound average or something of smallmouth for oh those five my fish. gosh how big uh, how you're probably not allowed to say was that a huge area you were fishing or did most of those get caught off the same like couple of rock piles uh three zones three zones three zones, uh, three zones. dang dude that's not and paul and i have fished the st lawrence we went once with monster bass the whole monster bass team went there so travis yeah. was there i saw you guys you did some of the promo stuff for yeah. some of the new drops yeah. with travis so we we've had the pleasure of fishing with him he kicked our ass absolutely just dusted the floor with us but yeah. uh i mean paul and i having never fished that environment having terrible weather we felt okay with how we did i think what was our second bag that was the bigger one was that 25 more than oh, yeah. three. Yeah. it was in 25. that area yeah 23, 25. Yeah. Yeah. We did okay. We did okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, it was it was a blast. So there you go, you guys. Like finesse does not mean little fish. Like it's just a method of fishing, and it happens to be extremely effective for smallmouth. Uh, because I've been seeing the fish that you post up, man. We we chose one for our thumbnail. The thing was a tank. Uh, so I just wanted to get that out of the way for everybody's like, mm -hmm. oh, we're talking spinning tonight, we're talking finesse. Like, I'm not yeah. get out of town. Uh, so, you know, let's talk about Great Lakes Finesse, man. Like, so we were talking a little bit behind the stage, you know, before we jumped on here, you were dabbling in different things in the fitness industry or fitness. That's my other job fishing industry. Yeah. <laughs> uh, before you landed here. So like, tell me a little bit about that, like your journey that led you this way. Yeah. Um, yeah, I worked, I, I mean, I worked with on another company called national pro staff for a lot of years. Um, that company 
brand for like 12 years and uh, I got to work with a lot of people in the industry and, and learn a lot. But I've always been like, that was about sponsorships and connecting anglers and brands mm -hmm. in the industry. And my passion was always about fishing. So everything I did was just so I can go fishing. Right. And, um, fish a lot of tournaments, uh, have done pretty well, um, fishing tournaments and, uh, really because of the level of competition around here, we've got three elite series anglers that literally live within 20 minutes of me and, and they compete against us regionally. And the competition level is so high here and we just have to get so creative with how like how to win and um i kind of got on this really light line and really micro baits for big fish and uh, something that no one was really doing yeah. uh many years ago uh one of my good friends kind of stumbled on this a little bit he introduced it to me and then i just ran with it and um we kept it really secret won a lot of money on it and um yeah so really just started to make some baits for ourselves and and like we were doing really well in tournaments and then i had triplets and all of a sudden i was like well i'm not going to go to the show so yeah. you know let's what's the next best thing and that and that's to like i love entrepreneurship i love fishing and i love this new technique and no one was doing it and i couldn't find the baits that i wanted to like i had all these envisions of like what the bait should look like and be for what i wanted to do and um mm -hmm. I was like, well, we'll just do it ourselves. So we started making baits ourselves, started sell, like started selling them locally. Um, a few retailers like kind of gave us a shot because I knew them really well. I've got a pretty good presence in this area, and they put them on the shelves. And next thing you knew, like so, like the top anglers immediately understood what was going on, and they were buying them. And the retailers were like, it wasn't like a lot of people were using the baits. It was more just like a handful of guys, but they would clean up the whole shelf. <laughs> and um so the real a lot get... in that area mm -hmm. like the local shops like where where we go yeah they know that if you buy flatworms max scent in in color mango magic you could buy three boxes of them and if yeah. you put them out they'll be gone same thing with like yeah. the, the nose fluke the nose hook fluke they make same with some of the z-man stuff like they know if you put it on the shelf this one someone she will come gone. in and drop 500 bucks and just walk out with whatever you had exactly and, and that was what was starting to happen and then i started to see the orders come in through our online shop that we had which was mediocre at best and um like people were dropping like six seven hundred dollars on on like these orders and i'm like wow this is crazy yeah and uh next thing you knew like the secret started to get out we were promoting it we started like just we started up an instagram page immediately like in the first hundred followers that we had two of them were elite series guys it was like they knew right nice. away casual and, uh yeah they kind of like slipped in there and i'm like oh my gosh what's going on here and uh yeah the word just started to get out like some of the biggest names slipped into the dm and we're just like hey how do we get these and they had big tournaments and um yeah, yeah so it, like we're just kind of got out we had no marketing spend we were just selling baits making them and before we could even really within a year we could not keep up like we were getting retailers reaching out to us saying hey like we want to bring this stuff in like you guys at DNR Sports in Michigan, like KVD Shop, like they were one of the yeah. first. They understood what we were doing right away. Um, Omni was pretty quick. Um, Tackle Warehouse showed immediate interest, and um, and then we were just like, "What's going on?" It got to the point where we just literally could not make the stuff fast enough, and people were getting mad they couldn't get it. And retailers would get an order, like a huge order, they'd be sold out within a day or two, and then the next day they placed like another order, like two or three times that size. And, um, so we had to cut off new dealers. Like we just, if stores were coming at us, we were like, no, we can't, like, we just can't bring in any new ones because we can't even mm. service the ones we have. So, um, that just kind of got like really insane. And and then we like guys were winning tournaments on the stuff and, yes. and now, right now, well, yeah, they're winning. Yeah. Like it, it's in the last, um, basically like in the last three events, four of the last, like, Four of the last five either elite series events or opens events, one of our baits has been in the top ten. Yep, that's for sure. Nice. So, so the word just is like going out, and um, yeah, it just got out of control, like just completely. It was like a rocket ship, and um, we didn't have a demand problem. We had a supply challenge, like we could not supply it. So, uh, you know, some people not, might not know, but a company called Pradco reached out to us, and I actually knew those guys because I'd worked with them through my previous business and. 
they saw what was going on and, and they basically made made us an offer that made a whole lot of sense for the brand to solve pretty much all of our challenges because our challenge wasn't demand it was it was supply and that's something they could easily come in and fix and not only fix that stuff they could also in, like improve our quality tremendously so um those are two big things and then also of course just their relationships in the industry uh, if anyone doesn't know who pradco is it's like yum booyah uh, go watch our last unboxing video it's we, all your favorite baits and then a couple you didn't even know about yeah so so basically like to be able to like lock into their distribution their marketing and their manufacturing was just a huge it, was, it basically just allowed us to to yeah. fuel the rocket ship and allow the brand to get to where we always wanted it to be and that was to bring this new style of super finesse fishing to the to the masses so that they could experience what i what i know and what i've had a lot of success with so we're all about making really small baits but for really big fish and also really owning that category of super finesse and providing education on how to fish this stuff because it's not about the bait it's a whole system it's about understanding when it applies what you know what uh rods and reels you need and then you know and then it comes down to like the bait right so um yeah. all of the things are are thought through in an entire system and um i don't know if you can tell but i'm really passionate about it this is what i love to do yeah. and um i'm just super grateful for i feel like it didn't it, it was kind of weird for me being a hardcore tournament angler for like 20 plus years and keeping secrets so close to me and then going complete opposite and going here's everybody everything. Buy it. <laughs> here's everything i've got and everyone has just been like incredibly supportive and we can't thank like everyone for it's kind of like when you give you almost you get more in return like mm -hmm. and you keep doing that and it's just like we feel that from the fishing community and it's just been so much fun and um i i ramble on a lot there about where we are like where we came from and where we are now but um yeah, we're just all about providing really good value and making sure that we make baits that catch fish and not anglers, because that's something that happens in this industry a lot is brands start with, uh, okay, how, like, what is this going to look like on the shelf? We start with what's this going to look like in the water and our fish going to eat it. And that's, we're kind of yeah. like the reverse. So you'll notice like with our stuff, it's kind of like, it's not flashy, but we really focus on the underwater footage and there's a lot of that that comes out from us because quite frankly our stuff looks incredible in the water yeah and yeah. you're not being modest about that 100 we've got a chance mm -hmm. to test this out a little bit on the water uh yeah great autism anglers in the house what's up uh happy to have you as always my my man uh it says that glf drop minnow would be killer in florida for peacocks 100%. That was one thing I was going to point out is like, I know a lot of folks would be on here. They're like, oh, he's from Canada. Oh, you know, the boys are from Michigan. Oh, we're just talking about finesse fishing, spinning gear, blah, blah, blah. Down south, that won't work. It absolutely will. You absolutely could catch giants on that. Watch so the events that are happening in the south mm -hmm. right now. That's mm -hmm. the, the proof is in the pudding. You well, think this? Yeah. Oh, good. No, I was going to say like Luke Palmer just got a sixth place on Toledo Bend, um, <laughs> catching like six and seven pounder. You got like a nine pounder on a drop minnow cash that's Large insane yeah. I, I would point out too that we've been on the ultralight game for you know five years now we've been on the bfs game for the last like two ish years and this reminds me so much of like if like this is like if if the uh, the american cowboy went out and started making um super ultralight super finesse what's happening in japan right now like mm -hmm. a lot of these baits are like the american version of what is right now the only thing you catch fish on on super clear super pressured waters in like japan and china yeah. like the, yeah. these are the types of baits that are coming out and what struck me about them not only are they like small and really finessey uh durable they are durable what what made me like think about what's happening over there and how this is like the american version of it is like these are durable overseas they don't really I don't say they don't care. They don't aim for durability. It's a, if you get it, it's a byproduct. It's not how they design the bait. They design yeah. to get the catch. They don't care about the rest. They're, it's all mm -hmm. function, which I love. Yeah. I appreciate that. These are very durable. And we're going to talk about that in a minute. But what gets me about it is like, it's hi hyper, 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 hyper specific thing that you're trying to do with each one of these different baits. So like when you, if they can do other things, certainly. 
but you're like, no, but it's if you do this thing, if mm-hmm. there's a fish there, you have a good chance of catching that fish. But you, this is the way you were talking about the system, uh, the mm-hmm. rod and real stuff. But same thing with like, I'm thinking of the hover rig, right? The hover yeah. rig is like, no, no, the only thing I want you to do with it is go like this. And I want you to just make it go side to side. Don't move it forward if you can do that. I don't care about anything. I don't even care how deep it goes. Just make it do this and get it in front of a fish. Like that's the whole thing. Mm. But that's you're not going to do that if your line is too heavy. You're not going to do that unless you have a leader or, or you're using straight fluoro. You're not going to do that if there's no fish there. It's there's like this whole you have to get everything right, and it's but then it's like a perfect amazing thing. But it's hyper mm. specific, and that's kind of like I was thinking about not the underspin as much, but I was thinking about the, like the way the drop minnows made and the snack craw, how it's so small and just. You've got the the ball jig that goes with it. That's really like it's. This is the exact way you got to do it, and it's going to work yeah. phenomenal. Yeah. So yeah. we're going to talk about some of that stuff tonight. But that's what made me think about like th- this is it. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, Shout out to uh, Candy Fiala for joining uh, the Burly Bunch Elite. I think it was. It doesn't show on here. It shows on uh, YouTube. But cheers, thanks, Candy. So. Yeah, let's uh let's dive into that system a little bit. That's what I'd love. I mean, everybody wants to know that. So if I were to go out and pick up, and I, I want to point out too what Paul was saying there. It's like if this is sort of the Americanized, uh, North Americanized, we'll say to be fair, uh, version of like the JDM, that ultralight tackle for that clear water pressured waters. Um, it's extremely affordable because like I'm spending nine, 10, 12 bucks on flash J from fish arrows, 11, 50, 12 bucks yeah. for a six pack. I'm like, this is six 99. You know, I want to point out too. somebody asked earlier, like, okay, you know, great lakes finesse owned by Pradco based on your story. This is one of those scenarios where it's like, that just made so much sense. You did it for all the right reasons. And we've done videos on before. We're like, ah, oh, companies acquiring things, you know, big, big fishing bad you know uh this is one of those scenarios where like it allowed you to do what you want to do so i just wanted to, as an aside kind of throw that out there and let everybody know too like we've been lucky enough to be connected with you or you've hooked us up with some of this tackle we get to go test this out you've asked us to give us our our, our honest opinions in those videos and we absolutely will say with pradco we don't work with them we're not connected in that way but they're just like sending us stuff to try out so this has been a a really fun, fruitful, I- informative, really relationships. It's been cool. Yeah. Um, so yeah, just wanted to throw that out there and make sure everybody's on the same page. But people came for the techniques, so we want to get into. Hey, if you guys go pick these up, which you should, what is like the system? How would you approach this? Um, shall we start with a specific bait? Um, I think. I mean, I just want to touch on the JDM thing. What, like, yeah, quick, sure, yeah, because I, I do agree. Like, it's funny you mentioned that because you know internally we've got this mission statement. And it's to, it really is to provide JDM quality and type of baits, but built for the North American market. And I'm a huge JDM fan. I went to Japan. I like my wife was very upset at me because I want to hang out in the shops and not do other things. Yeah, yeah. I was there well, for the three days I was there, and um, yeah. but she's really cool. I can't. I'm not knocking her, but um, she gave me triplets, bro. She's the best. Yeah, yeah. She, yeah. No she's really cool. Be better, okay. She's a Let's hero. Not, she's a don't hero. get it twisted. <laughs> not, not all heroes wear capes, so um, she's, she's a hero. They wear twins. She's got them on the hips. They wear triplets, dude. She's dude. The best. <laughs> yeah, but I love the JDM stuff. The pro, the biggest problem I see is that their color selections aren't built for our fisheries 100%. and more often than not you look at their entire selection there's a handful of brands that are a little bit more in tune with north america but for the vast majority of them they might only have like one color that is reasonably applicable to what you're trying to do they'll have all these weird colors and you're like i would never fish that yeah. and you try them and they just don't like i've spent an obscene amount of money on jdm stuff that just doesn't work and it's only because the colors aren't quite right the oozy yeah. green that you always see, the their yellow is totally different. Ours is that chartreuse yellow. Theirs is like a yellow, yellow. like a crayon yellow. Uh, they get Crayola. so much gold, and I'm yeah. always not that gold can't work, but like gold will be like the staple color that they build everything around instead of like us. We have that like pearly silver, and yeah, you're right, 100. There's, right. there's a lot of you know just fish patterns too that just do not mirror over here. We don't have them. the carp stuff. Yeah. Right? yeah. yeah. I'm not saying like that all of them are like that, but when you see these really cool, clever, sometimes you see really cool, clever things and then the colors are just awful. 
Mega Bass yeah. is an exception to that. Like they are a little more in tune. They've got a team. They understand. So their stuff is generally cool. But um, yeah, I mean, let's if we want to dive into this, I mean, this isn't something that you're just going to like learn on day one and you're like just going to crush it. So I'm, I'm going to give you like a more palatable way to get into this type of fishing. Um, the first is pick up whatever lightest rod you possibly have. I don't know what you're going to have if you're if you got a bunch of rods or you have two rods, pick the lightest one. If anyone south of Tennessee has a medium light that's not like super, super, super into fishing, I'd be blown away, frankly. Yeah, like, I mean, today, like fishing, like spinning rod setups are at like an all-time high in terms of sales. Like baitcast lures and baitcast rods and stuff are kind of on the down spiral because everyone's kind of going to these more finesse techniques. But anyway... I, I regress on that, but <laughs> I would start, like I said earlier, um, the first thing I would pick up is I would throw this sneaky underspin, not necessarily this color. This is a good smallmouth color in clear water. If I was going to be fishing for largemouth or spotted bass, um, I would definitely be throwing this OG, which is, um, which is like a silver, oh, you see that silver. Uh -huh. and I, I would get it with, I would put on a little, a little drop minnow so this is seven and um sorry it's 2.75 inches so just shy of three inches you thread that thing on there and you cast it out and all you do is you cast it out and you just reel it back you don't do anything else with it like there you don't have to twitch it you don't have to let it fall just reel it out if you're in you know 10 feet of water or less you don't even need to let it fall if you're in deeper water you might want to let it fall a little bit um, the second, now what, what weight would you like, would you just start in the middle? I think one sixteenth is probably in the middle for you. So uh, we only have, range. so we have two sizes, um, that we had started out with. Um, so we got these two sizes, which are the, um, the, this is a three sixteenth ounce and then this is a five sixteenth. We just introduced the three eighth ounce. So it's, it's bigger. So we got oh, three, there's a three eighth ounce. It just launched. You guys. Okay, good. I was like, wait, what? Search? Yeah. So we just launched that one. It's going to be a Bassmaster classic release, but it is available today. And all of our retailers like picked it up because the sneak underspins are most popular product. I would tell um, you guys that thing gets down so fast. It's it does. amazing. Even with a plastic on it. Now depends on what you put on. I, I set it up with their drop, the drop, you know, minnow. but yep. It gets down, not in a bad way, but what whatever you think you need, it's not as much as you think because it gets right where it needs to go on super. If you're on light line, lightweight will get down there quick. I felt like yeah. I had plenty of control on it. Uh, we only, had, I mean, we fished it for a little bit the other weekend, but uh, I had a blast with it. So, yeah, yeah, definitely a, a great place to start. I think for a lot of people. So, S Holmes 0417 was asking about the Whitehall thing. This is a kayak adventure series. Chaz, if you could just post that link that I, I sent you in private chat, you can just like pin it up in chat there, but you guys can check that out. Get more info on that. Oh, he did. He busted in chat already. There you go. Look at Chaz's yeah. link. <laughs> I just saw a question there about a swim bait. You can absolutely throw a swim bait. Um, when we first started fishing these, we actually started with swim baits, so like a 2.5 or a 2.8, like a Kai Tech or mm -hmm. Jackal Rhythm Wave or yep. like a, a Mega Bass Haze Dong Chad. Those are all really cool baits that pair really well with these little underspins. The key to the underspin yeah. is it's actually built on a really small hook. So it's a it's a one aught Gamagatsu hook. So it's really fine wire and it's um but it's super sharp and it it fits those little tiny swim baits perfectly. So like everything will eat it. And the one thing I the one piece of advice I'll give people on this is that you'll notice that it's not a very thick hook. It's super sharp. It's a Gamagatsu jig hook. Um, but they pretty much set themselves and that's intentional. So people, there are other underspins, like this technique isn't something that originated in the North. This is actually something that we brought up from the South and we started using here. Mm. And, um, there's companies in like California and, and like, even like spotted bass, areas like guys are using underspins but the challenge that we ran into with those underspins specifically is they weren't made for smallmouth and light line so they're really thick gauge hooks yeah. and our problem was we would have no problem getting bites but we lose yeah. like a third of the fish we hooked yeah. and it was kind of like fishing a frog in pads like it was a heartbreaker so 
we would so our solution to that was to go down to this finer wire hook and we found that it was like setting a drop shot hook it would just find its home you don't even need to set the hook really you just kind of reel into the fish load up and like it's done like you don't need to do anything just loosen your drag and fight that fish and um now our landing ratio is well into 90 percent like we're going to land these fish and we find that the biggest fish we catch like if you go to our instagram i would say like we've got hundreds of giant fish on there like those are pretty much all our fish like I, those are mine yeah. and that's and like we fish together and we just take those pictures and it is a uh, hilarious joke how many big smallmouth are i think the only company that i see compete that has like biggest fish on their page like all the time from them and customers <laughs> is like beast coast yeah it's like you got uh, between i don't know who wins it's smallmouth it's not a question but they just in general it's pretty stupid how many giant fish are on the page. Yeah, you guys, you guys are crushing. It. You're out here playing chess. Everybody else is playing checkers. <laughs> like they have no clue. No, they're out there. They moved on to Parcheesi. We have gone right. further. They're like we're we're done. Well, we don't even. <laughs> I, I appreciate that. Um, but I guess what I was getting at there, and like that's just an awesome compliment. I thank you guys for that. Um, you know, the biggest thing for us is we're using these really long rods, and really, the the trick is to get your bait as far away from you as possible on the cast so we mm -hmm. we do everything we possibly can to maximize that distance and that means that when these big fish bite because as you get as your bait gets further away from the boat you're more your odds of catching and triggering the giant pressured fish increase so every foot is like pretend every foot is like a percentage chance that you're going to yeah. catch that big giant fish well for us the biggest ones generally bite right away at the very tail end of your cast. And with those longer whip your rods and like four and six pound test line to try to drive a thick gauge hook into that fish is nearly impossible. So that's why we had to go to these finer wire hooks. And, um, you know, some people we've seen people complain that like the hook bends out and I'm like, I know. And then they tell me what their setup is and they're using like a medium heavy or it's like trying to use a flipping stick with a drop shot hook. Like you're exactly. going to bend your hook out. So that's something that I just want people to understand about this product when they start using it is like, you don't even need to set the hook, just like cast it out, reel it in. The bait will do literally, it almost does everything for you. It catches the fish and basically hooks itself. It's incredible. So I would start with that one if I was like giving anyone advice and then. Can I ask you a question about that one real quick? Yeah, for sure. The, the, uh, bait keeper it's on top. Yeah. It's Who's on there? top. Is there a reason for that? Is it just because it would get in the way of the uh, the arm on the bottom? Um, initially, I just didn't. That's just what I was used to, and yeah. I've had no problems with it, especially with our baits because they're so durable. Like I'll catch like twenty five fish. I know that there are. There's another company that made a big deal about it being on the bottom because they like fishing Kitek, but like Kitek has really soft plastics, so You're I can understand. Well, well, the thing is, I've even pretty much any fish i catch with the kai tech the bait's done yeah. it, it, they get lots of bites i'm not saying that they don't work but they're just not very durable and that's yeah. a fact and they will i can't imagine they'll fight me on that one um <laughs> so um yeah i mean there's no real reason for it it's such a small little bait keeper i mean we're talking like real small and um it doesn't get in the way of anything it holds the bait on there really well um even if we start like catching a few fish it's so tiny that if the tear if there is a tear it usually i usually just break a piece off the drop minnow and then throw it back on and i can run that drop minnow like i've i've had it so it's like almost here on yeah. the, and i'm still catching fish on it so, so on the job on the drop minnow i had a day on it dude so i drop shot at it uh the the meltdown color the chartreuse uh and i did not change the plastic all day and i nose hooked it so normally like nose hooking we're catching all different sizes uh, of bass on, on the lake that we fish and normally at some point on the nose it's going to slip off i'm on a super light hook like it's going to slip off or it's going to tear off and it didn't so mm -hmm. i mean i can throw that out there for everybody and it held position too so either that or it'll like wear down a little bit and then it's always slipping down the hook you're not getting that horizontal presentation yeah um, yeah they were numb in that thing that so the awesome. yeah so the material we use and what really separates our baits you know let's let's not think about finesse for a second but what really separates our plastics are the material we use intentionally for the action we want and also the matte finish so i'll start with the matte finish 
<clears throat> all of our baits are dull, like our mat. And we used to rub our baits in the carpet of our boat before each tournament. Like I would spend an hour before every turn rubbing any bait that I thought I might use. So that way there was no glare. So most companies, like when they pull their baits out of the mold, they're super shiny. And um, so we figure out a way to get rid of that shine in the manufacturing process. That secret is right out of the bag. The second thing is the material that we figured out actually has true neutral buoyancy. So if anyone goes and looks at our footage, our baits don't float and they don't sink. They literally sit perfectly level in the water. So for drop shotting, and the reason why it's so effective on a drop shot is no matter what you're doing with that bait, it's never, it's always going to be in a good position. So if a fish is interested, it's, it's perfect. So you can dead stick it. You don't need to move it. And, you know, if you want to like literally sit there all day on one boulder and never move that bait, it's going to sit there perfect, which yeah. other companies can't claim. Um, so that was like something... When I started the company, I think what really drove the success was the matte finish and also on the drop shot baits, that true neutral buoyancy. That's why all the tournament anglers were like, like just going nuts over this stuff. It's yeah, an immediate it, it, differentiator. I've never opened a bag and been like, I. the only time I think I've been more surprised by getting a bait like out of the package from my, what I thought it was going to be to like what I got was the, uh, the gravity baits. The gravity baits... Oh or yeah, <laughs> I was like, what? Yeah, oh, what in the hell? Like, I did. You guys never use those days. Threw me, and the texture threw me from what I thought. Yeah, I, I, I um, I played with them like very little. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But you know, that's just another technique. Like, there's definitely a place yeah. for that. Yeah. Um, you know, again, we're trying to do specific things. So, mm -hmm. you know, for the neutral buoyancy, for example, where that really comes into play is if you're bed fishing, and you want to be on that. Like, the spot could be like like that and oh, yeah. you don't want if you move your bait off of that spot you're done and you're getting not ignored it. so you need to like that's why we wanted the bait to have the neutral buoyancy so we could just dead stick it and that fish will do circles for five minutes if we have to and then eventually they'll get mad and eat it um everyone you know, in minnesota is like through the roof about this right now <laughs> shut up shut up, shut up. <laughs> yeah well specifically this color that if anyone knows this color is a cheat code for bed fishing oh no the juice is loose yeah <laughs> watch so, out so um and also like specific offshore pieces of structure so if we're out in the middle of the lake 30 40 feet and there's a boulder we want to be able to like put that bait right on that boulder and not have to constantly move it because a lot of the baits on the market specifically the ones that are very highly marketed towards their scent you really do need to keep moving that bait or wiggling it towards you ours you can let her, like you can sit there and you can scent our baits so you can actually apply different scents and it'll still have that neutral buoyancy Oh, nice. Yeah. Good to know. Something to play around with. Tra Travis Manson right now is currently everything Cursing from you. sheep's blood to like his special dirt that he has out by the lake that he knows is chock full of good. He's soaking all your baits and all that stuff right now. I, I love, yeah, we found that out when we fish him on, Mad uh, with them on the St. Lawrence. Him, he, him so, and Epic Eric. <laughs> so he actually helped us design this bait. This yeah, is I, I saw it on the site. Bait. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah. yeah, he's a good buddy. That's that's awesome. you got the right person, man. There's like very few people that I personally know that I would trust more to design a bait like him, Ben Nowak, and then Eric, obviously, because yeah. like for yeah, that I mean, specific purpose. Who knows more sure. about hooks than friggin' that guy? Oh my god, it's absurd. The, yeah, when we we were, <laughs> oh staying, we were staying at like this Airbnb when we did the St. Lawrence, and Eric just comes out with like essentially a briefcase of like Some jig heads, oh, random oh, stuff. Like yeah. dumps it on the counter and he's like oh, what do you think about this you ever seen one of these before and like almost everything every single thing he showed me i was like i've never seen that and then yeah. he sent me home with a goodie bag and i was like all right cool <laughs> yeah he's th those guys are like a1 guys like yeah nothing but respect and and like just not only great guys but crazy good anglers oh yeah 100 oh, percent. watching them work in <laughs> st lawrence when we were struggling totally. and they were just like pow 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 yeah it was nuts so all right Back to the baits here. We were talking about the uh, the sticky underspin, drop minnow, great combo. Anybody you know looking to get started with this, longer rod setup. You're suggested like seven six, lighter line. You got that four six pound leader, uh, and you threw out early in the show twenty five hundred size spinning rail. So we got like a great starting point, I think, for folks. If they were to step from you know numero uno bait to numero dos, what would be a dos? Um, I think. It really depends if people are are comfortable with 
fishing a tube. Then we just released the Juby Craw, which is um, an this incredible thing. little bait. Yeah. 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 This thing is is next level. So it's a small 2.5 inch size tube, but it's in the shape of a craw. And this thing is is unbelievable. We um, like it's the most dangerous Ned rig looking thing I've ever seen in my life. I know it's on a tube, but like, is this a new color too? Because you, yeah. oh That's yeah, the green pumpkin orange. Yeah, Dude. but it's not orange. It's more I mean, like I mean, a I mean, brownish orange. Like it it's a yeah, color. like it's so sick. That is um, insane. And it's such a like it's such a versatile bait. Like you can you can even make it like weedless by tucking the hook i in. saw that photo oh yeah that. That, yeah so like you can get really, like, <laughs> i mean there's a lot of tricks you can do with a tube so like yep. you know stuffing cotton balls in there and, and putting scent in there and um, rattles, scent, rattles yeah. and doing all sorts of cool things like i've had added stingers so if anyone's comfortable with the two and which is like everybody in the north who's fish for small like, you basically <laughs> have like this is our take on the traditional tube um yeah. it's just we feel like we make a really like one of our top sellers um like on omnia and, and type of warehouse is our mini pro tube head so it was yeah. designed specifically for mini tubes like that 2.5 to 2.75 inch size and it immediately has become like we can't pour them fast enough so but people were like you guys need a tube what tube should i use blah blah, blah. and like I mean, so like this is a typical tube and this is how our head fits in there and, and our yeah, head yeah. design is flat. So it actually keeps the head from rolling on its side. Nice. So that you, that's that, that's the biggest thing about your tube that's different than like almost everyone else's. Yours looks yeah. like it was designed for bottom contact. The most, tu yeah, yeah. most tubes are just designed to be inside of a tube and they yeah. don't do anything else with it. And I'm like, I was always like, why aren't these sled heads? Like, what are we doing? Yeah. Yeah, I mean that like you nailed it, right? Like as soon as it's in there, people are like, "Good enough," but like GLF style, we're like, "Okay, what can we do to make this take this category to another level?" Well, it's the same thing with a tube. Like everyone's like, "You need a tube, you need a tube," and I mean, there's a lot of good tubes out there. Like we can make this. Like this is not hard. Um, but we were like, "Man, we got to do it right." Like what can we do to take this category to another level? And and really a category that's really been boring for the last ten that's plus years. So boring. <laughs> so so we're like what can we do? And we know how much these fish love craws. And yeah. so many times we're fishing these areas and they're spitting craws out it, like in our live well or beside the boat. And, or we just know they're feeding on little tiny juvenile craws. So, I mean, that was the solution was this juvie craw. So we launched this thing two days ago and um, it's madness. Like it is like, I can't, I don't, I don't believe it. Like how I feel bad having a bag, frankly. You don't you have be, a bag. I have be, bags. <laughs> might be able to come on eBay, eBay here pretty soon for a big sum of money. Yeah, the way I love it. Uh, we just and had to like literally clean out all of the insane amount of inventory we had. So it's yeah. uh it's like we're just trying to make them as fast as possible right now. Um so if you're a tube angler, I mean that's a really good kind of a transition into the micro finesse stuff. The other one is like our snack craw. So this guy here is yeah. is like really really good and i mean oh, really that's in that brown color that yeah so this oh. is a new color oh. yeah, yeah so we have three new colors for the classic next week um the green pumpkin purple and um money such and, then, and that, that's like who else who else puts purple in their plastic is that a black and, people in the middle that's a black and blue so yeah so this is actually so we fish them like this like on a sorry on a ball head yeah. so that, like this yeah. is what yeah. we throw and this was one of our baits in that um that record bag that we got in the saint lawrence yes but um what we found is that people are using these as finesse jig trailers like all over the country like everywhere like you name a state it's being used and it's being sold and it's it's crazy so that was why we came up with like the black and blue because guys wanted like a black and blue for their jig is your uh, black and blue traditional black and blue or is it the Canadian Royal preferred Royal no, blue. It's, it's like a, no, no, no. It's like a matte black with some, some blue flake. It's hard to see in my light, but yeah. Um, you can see it on the website and uh, yeah. So it's been like, what's really unique about this is that it's fish like a Ned, but the claws, there's little relief cuts on the, on the bottom and the claws actually lift 
mm. but just enough. So like there's a little bit of float in there. So when you're dragging on the bottom, the fish will like kind of nose up to it. And then those little claws lift just a little bit. So anyone who wants to see that footage, all like every one of these products on our banner has underwater footage immediately. So you can see what these baits look like underwater. And that's really what, I mean, you can listen to me all day, but as soon as you see the underwater footage, you'll understand um, why this like plain looking bait is like all over the place now. Um, so those would probably be two baits that I feel like you're going to get bites for whatever you're fishing for, whether it's large mouth, spotted bass, small mouth, um tubes are kind of a there there are some people doing damage on tubes down south too and they're not really talking about it and i'm hearing about it so yeah. i wouldn't i wouldn't dismiss that as just a smallmouth thing if um if you're into like largemouth fishing but i mean those are two really good starters the other one we just released is the um the juicy helgramite so this thing here is like we've been keeping this style of bait a secret for a long time we've almost been happy that people like brands weren't releasing many because there's not many on the market and no. of the ones yum. that are on the market, yum has one yeah uh nico look yeah. how little that is dude yeah nico and yum are the ones that we're most experienced and with. euro tackle euro tackle has one yep yeah. yeah i think i have um, tried that that thing's nuts this is a meltdown color yeah so i don't know which ones did we send you do you got do you uh, have a brown pumpkin special because this is my favorite one Oh, brown pumpkin. Now I hope we. I think yeah, so. I've, I've got black and brown pumpkin. These would be like my. These are our go. I always want mud. So yeah, not only are they like, not only are they really small. Go ahead. We do. We do have it. I got it. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Money. <laughs> Paul can have one out of the pack. It'll be totally fair. All I need. So you, might, uh, you might only need one actually i might regret but, my decision <laughs> yeah so if anyone's fished a helgramite the ones that do exist on the market they're they really haven't done this this style of bait justice and this is still an emerging category and no. um what we did was we not only did we go really small we also went with the like the matte finish which were the only ones that have that the other thing that we have done with ours that no one else has done is incorporated that true neutral buoyancy formula. So you can drop shot this. So at first really? glance, most people would think I need to drag this thing on the bottom because that's where they live. But we found that we actually catch way more fish with this bait on a drop shot, like way more, probably like three X how many fish we catch dragging it on the bottom. So you can still drag it like on our ball head. Like we've got ball heads that go down all the way to like, like 16 ounce that's a gamagatsu 604 like yeah. very stout but very small like this isn't like a, a cheap hook at all so it can handle the biggest fish you hook like you get if you catch like a 20 pound fish you'll be able to land get that the right hook. rod yeah yeah i mean that that hook there you could even use a stiffer rod for sure like our yeah. stealth ball head has a has the gamagatsu 604 which is a thicker gauge hook but just mm. small smaller so those two baits like the Juvie Craw and the Helgramate are new in like two days ago. And um, there's like slayers. We've been, I've had these products like in my mind and like prototypes for like close to two years now, but we just couldn't release them because we couldn't keep up with demand on the existing line. So we're really yeah. excited. We haven't released anything in like a year, close to two years. And when we did release stuff, it was just like, extensions of weights on the tube yeah. head or stuff that was reasonable to incorporate but yeah this is really exciting for me like it's almost like a sense of relief like finally i can get this stuff out there and you know yes i've had this stuff but i've also not had a lot of it so i kind of rely on this bigger production so that i can actually have enough of what i need to go do what i want to do and not feel like oh shoot i shouldn't be fishing this because i'm going to run out of them yeah. um, well, yeah. you just made a lot of river fishermen very happy because, like, 100%. two things, two things that I need in the in the river. I want to have a helgi, and I gotta have some kind of cross light or tube. Like, it's some those are I would pick those over anything else. Yeah, Julie said it right there. Like, I mean, folks that fish for smallies and they fish creeks and rivers, like they know these things slay. These are all it, the thing that excites me the most about that tube is like there just aren't that many tubes like that. I mean, we just rediscovered an old one from yum but this is mm -hmm. like 
totally different in its own unique way, which makes me excited. And mm -hmm. because we got the Pradco stuff in, they did send like a similar size yum tube. So now I can put them head to head and be like, eh, you should. Let's, yeah. let's see how these work together. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. A funny story about that. I had this idea and then I brought it to the product director. And mm -hmm. I'm like, man, I've got this idea. It's a craw tube. And he was like, oh, that's awesome. This thing's going to be incredible. And we, go, we were like three months into the process. And I didn't even know Yum had this craw. So we were doing a we were doing a walkthrough of Bass <laughs> Pro. And I see it. And I'm like, this is a craw tube. Bro. Like, we have one. I'm like, I didn't even know it existed. Like, what is going on here? It is, so, it, it's bro. funny you say that. I had validation. Exact... I had the exact same experience. I yes. I was on the website doing the order from Pradco, and I was like, I thought I knew Yum. I'm a Yum. I I got some dangers, right? You're like, a dinger. I know what I'm doing. I'm going <laughs> through the the Yum. So I'm like, yeah, tell me yeah. more. I know about the the paddle tail, the Scotty, all that stuff. And then also I'm like, well, that's a damn looking look at that little guy. And I'm like, yeah. see that little cross. And then I saw the side. Yeah. I was like. Son of a and they got some good colors actually that mud that muddy brown color is like it's got just so, enough caramel yeah. it's got just enough brown in it it's perfect here's yeah. the validation part of this though for us here dan is yeah, that no we idea. we posted a video and paul did the video but he was like i never knew this existed and the comment section was like we've been around for 30 wrecked. years they're like you're, you're fired your opinion's not worth anything get out of here i was like hey wow, wow, wow. I, yo I dan didn't, didn't know, know they existed either so heck you I nerds no idea. had i known i would have fished them like i, I got like every color <laughs> right yeah it's fine yours is better there's two um but yeah it's like so I like maybe. yours though. The, I'll tell you why I like yours because look, Ned Rig Fisherman for life made a t shirt about it. Okay. Yeah. Um, this is such a night, uh, um, um, a, a totally different, like a totally different way to fish a Ned. And that's where I feel like people lose tubes because there's a, there's a lot of ways that you could fish a tube mm -hmm. drifting, flipping it, like dragging the Carol. It does, there's like, it does everything. But it's so it, just like if you were going to recommend, like, okay, if you just want to see if it works, flip it out there, drag it on the bottom, right, or hop it on the yeah. bottom, and and it's going to destroy. But it's I so don't... different than a craw, but it's craw ish. So this is like the perfect Ned, the Ned craw. I love it. I don't know if you guys have the ability on your end to just pull in like a video off Instagram or something just to show people. I just posted a video earlier today, or even go to the website just so people can see what this thing looks like because we can talk about how cool this thing is. Um, and maybe you can't, but like we can talk about how cool it is. But when you see this thing in the water, it literally looks like a little craw doing its thing. It, it's absolutely like that's really the amount of messages we've received from people going like as soon as I saw that underwater video, I was like, wow, it was a and done deal. It was like, yeah, like so it looks really cool. It It's it's nettish too, like you said, like less is more. Mm -hmm. So there's not appendages, no legs on it. It's just like couple claws couple whiskers keep it simple yes um you could probably lose a claw lose a whisker and it probably even catch more fish oh, um <laughs> we had a we had jeff and i had a video we did like two years ago on the river and didn't realize i was you know fishing with one with one claw but i was yeah. catching fish and then i was like well i'm not gonna change it now so i just kept and i just kept catching fish the other one came off and i caught even more fish when the cross came off it was like wait yeah. now i'm in a hammer i'm like yeah 100%. yeah yeah here i'll uh i'll share screen and i think i can pull up this tab here hopefully everybody can see that this, this is a super, super exciting, exciting product. product i'm gonna mute it but i'll let that play while we talk yeah dan you can just say everything that you were saying in that video right now do the voiceover that'd be great <laughs> <laughs> this is a super exciting product for us you know <laughs> he's got the script still right there <laughs> it's, it's funny because travis we were on small with crush like earlier this week and he played this video and we're on live and he, he just finished playing he's like hey we're done for the night like we're good now <laughs> there. look yeah, at the claws dude the claws just kind of like gently fluttering oh, yeah wow. so the key here, unlike a traditional tube, most tubes on the market, pretty much all of the ones that guys are used to throwing are heavily salted. Definitely. So all the little appendages sink. Ours actually has floating in it. So the whiskers actually lift and the claws okay. lift a little bit too. So it's a completely different look. So yes, it's a tube, but 
it's like it's just such it's something so different that they don't see and yeah. um yeah i mean that's like the part of the video where i'm kind of like talking fight a fish oh look at this big fish i'm kind of giving you the run i mean yeah i literally <laughs> am um, <laughs> but I, uh, small mouth you know no big hey, deal look when i get my big small mouth can i just be featured on the page page once i'll, I'll tag you yeah, yeah don't, don't don't let him do it <laughs> so yeah Never give it so that's just talking about like how the hook sits right in between, like right oh, in that yeah. slit in the head. There's a little slit but, in the head, yeah. Yeah. So you can kind of see it swimming there. Like it's yeah, it's really, really like if you go check it out, it's it's really cool. Um yeah, what's crazy, we're looking at the analytics of the the video, and it was like we had like tens of thousands of people watch the video, but like half of the people replayed it so yeah. we were, like, we were really analyzing the footage and, and checking out what those claws are doing i just so, watched it on the fall and you're right like it's it, when it stalls yeah. and drops it drops like level yeah and if you can like hit it on like you'll see in a couple spots like the claws just want to stay there right yeah um so yeah really really effective like yeah. we we um we tested this like obviously like when we're developing products we're not really interested in just developing products for the sake of doing it we we wanted to see if we could make something better than a tube as well so we would test this beside a tube like my, my turn partner and i would be fishing the same color one in a tube one in the juvie craw and it was clear as day like we were getting way more bites on the juvie craw and it was just because we're fishing areas that like this was like late summer these fish have seen a million baits but like this was working really well um yeah. and a lot of the like the majority of the testing of the final version was more like august september into october a lot of the early iterations happen much earlier that just didn't perform like we went through like eight versions of this before we got the right one and um yeah like the first version we got was absolutely horrible like it was too thin like i set the hook on the first fish and i had no tube come back so oh, we so like we like not only like the traditional tube is just dipped right like they dip it a couple times and that's it so it's uniform throughout well ours has different thicknesses throughout the bait so like the butt of the bait um where the hook comes out like the eye comes out that's thicker where the hook comes out of the face that's thicker but then other parts of the body are thinner where we want the bait to collapse down so if a fish bites it we want it to be thinner so that it you just get more hook gap so like all of those details were designed to not only get you bites but also to um to help you land fish because that was a big part of it too is we want to really have like a high landing uh percentage yeah unit body construction for a snack craw what did you say paul got unit body construction like the underside of a car like it's got oh, like yeah, yeah. it's like crumple zones <laughs> yeah so <laughs> what i was showing there was we actually so a tube is round right yeah. we actually incorporated a flat bottom on the bottom of the tube so that yeah. it would it wouldn't roll over and that's what i'm explaining here you'll see the tube a normal tube just rolls yeah ours won't do that so there's like there's a lot of thought like it looks like a goofy tube bait but it's like the amount of thought you know and like when people look at the bait they're gonna see a lot of scuff marks on it like little, little stuff like they're probably like oh i should add detail well no, we're actually we find that the more these baits get eaten and they get yeah. like a sandpapery to them the more fish want to bite them so we actually all our little baits have like these little scuff marks in them to imitate um the teeth marks from having been eaten a bunch of times like we want it to be like ready to go out of the package as if we were fishing the biggest tournament of our life yeah that yeah. that's what it is these are all tournament secrets so you guys just get the juice you don't even have to like spend 30 years doing tournament fishing trying to <laughs> people are literally out. they're getting baits that are like basically tournament tuned right out of the yeah. package and they don't even know they're getting that like that's what they're getting out of a glf bag that's like a tagline man now you tournament do. tuned Dude, I love yeah. that tournament. That's you you got to make a sticker. The, yeah, forget Matt. Stop with Matt. Yeah, tournament tuned finish. Tournament oh tuned. Yeah. It sells itself. You're Pretty wrong. much. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. 
<laughs> You're welcome. How do we, how do we talk tonight? Okay, I'm gone. <laughs> I, I got things. Like, I gotta go. I'm, I gotta go. I'm I'm waiting I gotta, for my I gotta, shirt. I got a lot of work to do. I gotta talk to graphics. Let's go. I a full line of tournament tune T-shirts. T- tournament tune tees. We'll take some. <laughs> I'm writing that down right now. Seriously. Yes. Like we did a kidding. thing, you guys. Yeah. You will. <laughs> you, will see, you will see that in our marketing. I love that so much. This is the greatest. Yeah. Perfect. Awesome. That's so cool, though. Like, just it, it, just the thought of tournament tune is like things that you would never, you would not figure out because the tournament guys wouldn't want to share it. You'd have to learn it over, you know, years on the water. Uh, and you guys just got it pre packed, man. I know some people are probably mad about that, but I'm stoked for it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, again, like I've, I've done really well in tournaments. Like, I'm not tooting my own horn or anything. Like, I feel yeah. like, from a tournament perspective, like I'll never go to the elite series. I just, that's not a goal for me. Um, I'm not saying it's not a great goal for someone. It's just for me, that's not really something that I intend to do. So like in terms of locally on some of the biggest tournaments, like I've already, like I've won some big ones, you know, for, I broke a record on the St. Lawrence. Like that's something that I'll like, I'll never forget. Yeah. So, like, so I'm at the point now where I'm just like, I'm so excited to just, get this stuff out there and the amount of messages we get people are like i broke my pb and i won a tournament like that actually gives me more joy than winning a tournament it's crazy but i like i'm like i'm telling my wife i'm like hey check out this message and she's like oh cool and i'm like no but seriously like look how cool this is and like i'm like meeting people and we're talking back and forth through instagram like I'm, people dm us all the time and i'm like we'll have huge messages and going back and forth and it's just been so awesome to to just kind of put all this stuff out there, put myself kind of in the brand out there and, and then just feel the community and the support come back. It's just been awesome. I love it. It, I've definitely noticed the response as well. I mean, you guys popped up on our radar and we were like, how are we not fishing this stuff right this second? (laughs) Well, Uh, I appreciate that. That's our kind of stuff for sure. Uh, Do we cover the, I mean, I know we got the new stuff. Any other baits that you wanted to call out? I mean, we got, we got the hot ones for sure. Yeah. I mean, if there's like, I, I'm not sure, like maybe we can ask if there's like questions about um, like, we've got a new product that's designed for like Damiki or like some of the new forward facing sonar techniques. Like this is our hanging head. So it's designed to hang a minnow or whatever, like perfectly horizontal, that weight position. So most jig heads, you need to adjust your knot to get the thing to sit right. Well, we got it in the perfect spot where you're not, as long as you just tie a knot to it, it's going to sit perfectly horizontal. So if you have questions about that, um, the dif- the difference between this one and most, like pretty much all of them on the market is again, the finer wire hook, because what we found is that, um, and people might be able to relate to this. So they get out, out in the deep water or something like midsummer, the lake's been beat on, the water's warm and they found a huge pot of fish, but they can't get them to bite. Well, our solution, yeah is generally um to to go down in line size so like start with like eight then go to six and then we've gone down to as low as three pound test fluorocarbon and we find that with the like the whippier rods so that we use the whippy rods not not just for casting but also to absorb shock so we 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 grew up as steelheaders so we fish like super long rods and really light line and micro hooks to catch like up to 20 pound steelhead and um it's the same principle so we're using light wire hooks to use the lighter line so that way we don't have to set the hook and we can just like put pressure on the fish and it does itself like we can land all those fish so that's really it's a finesse jig head if you're going to use light line and, and go more finessey offshore using like forward facing sonar and then we've also got this is like oh man my light here let me use it get a different one um also comes in black, matte black. Do not overlook that if you're a smallmouth angler because they yeah. love matte black. But so this is our swim bait head. I don't know if you can see that. So yeah. this yeah. is our, our new product. So it's the sneaky head, sneaky underspin head and hook and everything, except for that there's no blade. So we started cutting the underspin off at times mm-hmm. and then just using this head. Um, and we would just use our little drop minnow and put it on the back and just cast it out and reel it back. So this whole like, everyone's scoping and they're shaking their rod tips like crazy well we've got a technique called the cindy rig and i'll tell you the story of how this came about and it all makes sense in a second but essentially hair jigs 
people fish hair jigs they cast them up reel them in straight and then they crush fish well we found that this has replaced the hair jig entirely for us um and i'm not saying i don't like hair jigs because i got like 200 that i tied myself but <laughs> i found when i started um just throwing this thing out on a ball head uh it would just like just reel it straight in mm -hmm. and we would just crush fish so this is like a head if you want to go even more natural to have like a minnow head then you can really get super like crisp about your technique um but the cindy rig so a little bit of context here luke palmer on st Clair last year got second place he nearly won the event and he figured i had told him about the cindy rig when we merged with pradco and uh he pulled it out in that tournament nearly won um but the story is is that years ago my good friend and, and kind of a fishing mentor so a, a local legend here named steve delier his wife is named cindy so he went to lake simcoe which up here is like renowned for giant smallmouth but it's surrounded by crazy population so it gets a lot of pressure mm -hmm. so i get this call from him one day and he's like Dan, you'll never believe this. So I went fishing with Cindy and we were dragging tubes. Well, I was dragging a tube. Well, she doesn't really know how to fish that well. So she was just casting the tube out and reeling it in. And he didn't really care if she caught fish or not, but she was slaying fish <laughs> by just casting the tube and reeling it back. So immediately, like my brain is like, just going like, whoa, what is going on here? I would never have thought to do that. No one just yeah. casts the tube and reels it. We're imparting no <laughs> access to that imparting no action just reel it in and yeah. um like like out fishing them 10 to 1. so i'm like okay we got to figure this thing out so we started playing with baits and then eventually we got to like basically a minnow style bait on just a mm -hmm. jig head and reeling it in and we called it cindy rig so matt and i my tournament partner we would like we've won like a lot of money on the cindy rig and we impart no action like it does nothing just nothing just yeah. reel it in and um yeah so for years we called the cindy rig and then we told luke about it and he used it and now like it's hilarious because um like cindy is just like my my buddy's wife and now like wired to fish bass master bass university has put out <laughs> stuff rig. on cindy rig so now you can like literally look up the cindy rig learn about it like we just wrote a blog on the cindy rig and really it's just my buddy's wife and it's nicknamed yeah, so, <laughs> yeah. so yeah that's the story behind the cindy rig but it is so luke palmer has literally so he had never cashed a check um he never made a cut on the elite series in the northern swing when we merged with practical he was on the pro staff he's a southern guy out of oklahoma he was like i i sat with them i had a meeting similar to this and uh, i just said hey guys here's the lineup here's how to fish it basically talking to them like i'm talking to you guys yeah. And like Jason Christie's on the team, Stetson Blaylock's on the team, and Lukens. But Stetson and, and Christie have actually done really well in the North. And by the time they got this, this information and these baits, they hadn't really spent any time with it yet. And so they weren't going to just start incorporating this into their elite series. They needed time. Luke, on the, on the other hand, had had no success. And he was just bought right in. He was like, I'm all in on this i'm all in on glf and the drop minnow and everything and like in that tournament literally on the water he remembered me telling him about the cindy rig and he pulled it out on day two and he caught three fish in like the last two hours that put him at the top and then he pr like proceeded to get a second place in that event went to the saint lawrence got i think 11 went to champlain got 13th and just got sixth on toledo bend with the cindy rig that's wow. awesome yeah hey dude dude dialed it tournament right. tuned i love yeah. it and then we were texting back and forth he's like oh man i really don't want to tell anybody about it but like i got you and then, like i mean obviously he wanted to keep it like a secret i don't blame him but you yeah. know he, he's like a super team player and has been tremendous about helping us like promote that technique and, and stuff um because it, it just carries more weight when it comes from an elite series angler like him than you know little yeah. old me yeah. fishing local events here even though you're smashing all of your events. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you set a record on St. Lawrence to saying something there. Um, yeah. All right. So, yeah, I had a couple from Chad. Nicholas Hubert called out one of my favorite things that we found with GF, GLF, which was the quick snap for the drop shots. Uh, that, like, exploded my brain. I used one when I was drop shotting the drop minnow uh, the mm -hmm. other weekend. And, yeah, being able to swap out those weights real quick, money absolute money yeah i also felt like it put a, it put a little less 
tension on like the um the tie at the top of the uh the weights so i mean sometimes you'll have that just like break and you lose your yep. weight you reel it back in you just get the little tie-in point um so that's nifty too maybe you save some weights and uh you can swap them out real quick yeah well i'll tell you the story about that real quick so i was fishing yep. i was pre fishing for a tournament on lake simcoe actually and um i got onto these flats and these huge like five and six pound fish were swimming around i couldn't get them to bite there's boats all around and then, like I said earlier, the only I ended up figuring out that I could get them to bite a drop shot on three pound test line. But the problem is every time I set the hook or even sometimes on the cast, the line was so light with that drop shot, like weight, because I'm using like quarter ounce or three eighths and it would just break. And mm. I was losing all these weights and it was annoying. And I'm like, I'm also an ice fisherman. I had these little clips that I use for a little like I fish for perch to the ice. And I was like, I'm going to tie on. I know the knot on that little like clip will be a lot better and I'll be able to clip on the weights and it'll just work. So that was my solution for that problem. But in like, while doing that, I realized like, man, this is really convenient. I can like not have the weight on my rod. I can just put on the deck, take it off, put it in the rod locker. I can switch weights on the fly. Like we fish a lot of transitions, like where you're going shallow to deep and vice versa. So we can just go like without your tag end shortening up every time you switch weights. Cause we always tie them. Yep. You can just switch from a three eighths to a quarter or an eighth, whatever you need to on the fly, super convenient. And uh, the only, the only negative about that is if you're using a net, the clip gets caught in the net, yep. when you net a fish. So that's the only downfall. But for me, I'll take that negative in a tournament any day. Yeah. Wham, the fish I already caught us in the, it's in the net too. Mm -hmm. I lost me wait uh <laughs> that's that thing was awesome though was it was such famous. a clutch find as soon as uh we saw it, we're like get those get those right now uh use I the like heck that. out of those we um, don't talk about that enough that product like we rarely I, mention it it's most it's underrated terminal it's terminal and everybody's like oh criminally underrated boring but yeah it's it's definitely underrated start charging more so people get more excited about it double yeah triple, like, 30 dollars yeah. a bag no, it's very exclusive you'll be <laughs> super yeah. pumped about it like, what do we put like, i think it's like four dollars for a bag or three dollars you get like 15 clips it's yeah. like yeah they're gonna last you a like long eight, time but you make it eight bucks people are like oh my god these must be incredible yeah <laughs> i don't know i don't want the emails it's like they're like get an effective clip or something at that point. Oh no. Twelve ninety nine pays for all the fees. So, yeah. 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 They're happy to pay it, I'm telling you. Yeah. Um awesome. Do we have any other questions that we missed in here? We had Snap a couple. We had one we had one about um what was it? The the BFS. Um I yeah. think it's six pound on that one. I clicked it at yeah. the same time as Chess. Yeah. <laughs> There you go. Samwise, Gamgee, of course. Uh, what size braid is best for BFS? Do you do any BFS, Dan? Not, not really. I mean, that's nah. more like bait casting and stuff. Um, I can't really speak to that on like a, like, I'm just going to speak to the things that I'm really comfortable with. Mm -hmm. um, I will say on a spinning reel, like we, I would say 90% of the time we're using five pound test braid. It's surprisingly strong. Power Pro makes a, yeah. we use the Vermilion Red Power Pro and that, that works really well for us. And red is actually the first color to disappear in the color spectrum. So if you're drop shotting in deep water, it, it disappears before any other color. Nice. Yeah. That's a hot tip, folks. Uh, yeah, BFS, it kind of depends. There's so much line. Like what I'd recommend is talk to some experts. Like we always just pick the brains of the guys over at Bait Finesse Empire. Uh, or if you guys saw Rar fishing on our show a few weeks ago, you can go talk to him. Um, I'm still an absolute rookie when it comes to that kind of line because there's all sorts of different stuff like four strand, eight strand. Uh, and then there's also like different pound tests, but you're also, you need to look at the diameter of that line too. When you slap that on a BFS bait caster and you want to yeah. get your castability, you want that narrower diameter uh, as well. Cause you can get light, light pound tests, but the diameter is the the issue that you're dealing oh. with, so you lose that castability. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. Uh, you've got Verivas behind you. You want to just—they uh, can't see it fully in your frame right now. But Verivas Four, uh, they have this like—it's a multicolored line. I forget what pound tested. I'm sure Paul has the exact one, uh, but I just bought it on BFE recently for a setup. That one. Look at that, 150 meters, 10, it's a, is it 10 pound test? Four strand. Well, yep, max 10, and then it's the 0.6 is the diameter. 0.6, that stuff is point six super are, thin. For your multi-species, including mm -hmm. big bass, the 0.8 was what I would recommend. That's the eight. 
Uh, mm -hmm. This would be if you like going on the lighter side. Yeah. So there you go. A little BFS stuff. Uh, anything else for, for Dan, for Great Lakes Finesse, you guys? Feel free to throw that in there. Oh, here we go. Lomax says, just placed a big GLF order on Lure Net. Can't wait to get this stuff for my local river. Going to slay. I promise awesome. you that. Thanks for your support. <laughs> we really appreciate it. That's awesome. All right. Well, we're getting to that point of the show where we do what we call slow rolling thunder. We used to call it uh, super early on lightning round. That didn't last long because uh, it takes forever to get through this. So <laughs> we're going to we're going to jump to this. These are just for fun questions. Answer them. You know, whatever your gut says is correct. Uh, oh, there your are... gut? Mm. <laughs> what? First question is about food. <laughs> oh, is it? Yeah. Usually they're about food. Like, that's not really surprising. Uh, we did like three episodes in a row recently that was like all food questions. Uh, I think we're hungry when we write these usually. Uh, okay, so let's, let's do the first one here and we'll have guests go first. So Dan gets to go first on this. The best French fry, French fry that money can buy. What is the best French fry that money can buy? Ooh, I don't know if you guys have legions in the U.S., but we've got like a local legion here, and they've got like incredible French fries. A, le I don't know, a like, legion? Like, I don't even know what that is. That's I mean, such an well, aggressive like, name. Their, so it's like um, so uh, aggressive. Like, hired army vets go. It's like a place where yeah. they go anyway. Like locally uh -huh. here, these like seniors have just figured out how to make the best French fry. Um, but in terms of like wow, um, just mass market. I mean, I don't. I don't know. Yeah, that, I can't really even think. Like, I don't know if you guys have Swish LA. <laughs> Man, you got all the cool stuff that we don't. Well, but, but like Legion is like an X Men character that is so, like, so Legion is like a is like a is like a like a hangout for senior yeah. retired army people up here, and like every they, town they has like, a Legion. Yeah, like they like all the like old retired vets like just yeah. hang out all the time. Like a Knights like, of Columbus. Yeah. So Dang, sorry, dude. Yeah, that's I can't. It doesn't five have to be guys. mass produced. Five guys, five guys makes really good. And five guys good. fries are flipping good, They're bro. So, good. so those are like very hungry. Hungry. <laughs> I would say five yeah. guys is probably the closest in terms of chain to what I'm describing. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's a five. Good to five guys is to. such a game changer. It's like. So Paul and I were at iCast and we ordered some five guys. And Paul's like, "You want um, an extra? Um, you want an extra eats. patty?" <laughs> Yeah, from Uber Eats. So he's like, oh, we'll add an extra patty. Not remembering that Five Guys already does double patties. No, so I bought the double cheeseburger. I was like, should we get oh, another patty? The... So we got a triple. We got the triple, bro. And then bags full of fries. It was insane. <laughs> uh, absolutely loved it. So, yeah, I guess mine is I usually look for and I test out as many places as I can. Truffle uh, fries or like oh, yeah. crack fries. Depending on what the place is, you know, whatever they call it. it. Used to be Hopcat used to call it crack fries. What do they call it now? I don't they call it something else. They got I don't know. They went, you know, eh, we probably shouldn't call it that. <laughs> they changed it. Um, but I've been plenty of places. We got a local spot here that's not a chain that does uh their own version of crack fries. So it's like that kind of mayo, uh green onions, truffle seasoning, uh salt, and it's like the thinner fries. That's it. Nice. I mean, all, it's kind of hard to mess up. Some folks figure out how to mess it up, but most people don't. <laughs> so nice. Nice. I, I would go for that. The truffle or the crack fry. What about you, my guy? Give me checkers got? and or rallies. Oh my checkers God. or rallies. The off the beaten path, off the grid fast food this guy goes with. I yeah, love it's it. definitely a tier two <laughs> fast food, but it's a tier one it's fry. I don't tier know three about. fast food at best. That's fine. But... I don't really care. Their fries, <laughs> I, I, I would just go through the drive through in Grand yeah. Rapids after I go fishing downtown. Be a mucky mess, nine thousand leeches carrying my blood downstream, and I, I would just immediately hit. You'd walk in like that, and they'd be I like, would "This, walk is, in like that and this is a normal patron from, for us." <laughs> from the knee down, just soaked in my own blood. <laughs> like, hey, ma'am, I need <laughs> That's four Thursday. large fries. And your best barbecue sauce. <laughs> <laughs> your bet she throws a pack at your face. Yeah. Your, I'll take your best barbecue sauce, <laughs> he says to a checkers. Here, here's how here's how I determine that it's a tier three. Oh, how many abandoned checkers have you seen? <laughs> I've seen I have seen so oh, many. Some folks so are just many. ignorant. They don't know a good fry when they get one. Okay, I don't know. What to There's you. just so many checkers parking lots overgrown. <laughs> I'm just like, oh, okay, cool. 
<laughs> yeah, that's tier three, bro. Uh, but I love it. That's fine. James Hook isn't wrong. Five guys too expensive. Five guys. That's too the hard. thing, my dude. The Jack Jack used to be still very affordable. Yeah. Uh, the the five guys is only affordable for about fifteen minutes. And then they pull the mm-hmm. old. They gave you a taste of the yeah. the drugs, the fries. Yeah. You go yeah. in thinking it's gonna be five bucks. No, it's thirty five bucks, bro. And, That's and- the handshake at the door. You want food, it's extra. Yeah. You're like, oh my they god. They try to they try to validate. I love when restaurants have all their like, we're the best restaurant awards, you know, yeah. around the restaurant. <laughs> and it's like it's a chain. So like every five guys has every same award. And it's just like yeah. which one of you was the best? A little sus. <laughs> right. I've been hearing about Jimmy John's for a long time. You guys said you were the best sandwich place in New York, which I've never been yep. to. <laughs> I'd like and I love that the awards are like from 2008 and you're like all right yeah, yeah it's like, get like updated. 48 years old like black and white. <laughs> level up son all right question number two you can see why this is no longer lightning round um <laughs> so, <laughs> question number two where where is the line weather wise so thinking of the weather where's the line where you're like yeah I really like my passion is fishing, but my other yeah. passion is living. So I'm not going to go outside. Well, today and, and now fish. I'm triply curious because you have triplets. So, and you're, you know yeah. what it means to be gone for like a whole day. So you're like, you this finally get a day it. where, where <laughs> the family is like, Hey, we'll, we'll, we'll yeah. shoulder the burden here. You get, you know, you get your 12 hours today to go fishing. So, but then the weather's always dog dirt when that goes to happen. And so, yeah. Yeah. yeah what's the line where you're like, you know what? I'll just, I'll take the hit. I'll just stay home. I'll, I'll have to blow mine. As soon as I can't get away with my Gore-Tex rain gear, that's it. Like it, oh, that's kind of like for me. Like if I got to go floater suit, that's for yeah. me. Or I mean, are you talking about temperature or are you talking about precipitation? Oh, oh no, temperature. Precipitation is long, again as long as my yeah, yeah, I'm fine with rain. I'm talking about like cold. Yes, so like yeah. I run like 100 mile an hour gear from Bass Pro. Like that stuff keeps you pretty warm. Yeah, so should you layer up underneath? If I got to go, Puffs are amazing. Yeah, I mean, I used to be the floater suit guy. I, I like dead of winter, January on the Niagara River, fishing steelhead and stuff, and like, like just crazy. Even on like Ontario by the new yeah. plan stuff, um, we used to launch boats right off the beach and break ice, and it was just silly. Like so cold, coldest days. Do your yeah. feet get cold or do your hands get cold first? Because Jeff and I are oh, feet. My feet. I yeah. my hands oh, are Jeffrey. My feet, my feet I, I can't do. Like even when I'm hunting and stuff, like that's the biggest problem. When your feet get cold, you're done. Every time I camp 100%. with Jeff, I'm actually worried that's gonna happen to him. My feet yeah. will die. But <laughs> yeah, because then the spirit goes shortly thereafter. Yeah. I, I've done better. I, I had to upgrade to the 1600 thinsulate boots. He's got man. like literally 14 pounds of thinsulate on himself so at all times on the lower half. And I'm I'm over here, I'll be in flip flops and he's literally like I'm yeah. throwing I'm throwing those little heater packets in my toes yeah. and stuff. In between each toe, I got one of those yeah. things. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and then like Paul's the opposite. His fingers yeah. go completely numb, and I'm like, I don't wear gloves like, all winter. It'll be 65, and I'm like, oh. yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, no, okay, dude. I can't no. tie this knot. <laughs> steelheading toughened up my hands. We used to steelhead year round. Oh um, yeah, but my feet, like, oh man, and the waders and stuff, and, oh, and like, break, breaking ice or whatever. That sucks. It's the Fair worst. Enough. Yeah, Jeff. Oh, Jeff what's yours? What's my uh, weather situation? Being that we're in kayaks, it's like super high levels of wind. So if it's like, if it's an ultra blustery day, like I don't, I'm not, I'm just not going to do it. (laughs) It's such a big sleeper. And we, in Michigan, look, I'm a, I am, I know that global warming is real. I, from, as somebody who has been around ice for as long as I have, I know global warming is real. I don't care what you say. I know it. All right. (laughs) <laughs> we get so much more wind Just in Michigan. That, yeah, I'm done. <laughs> I, we get so much more wind in Michigan now yeah. than we used to when I remember being young and being outside all the time. I never thought about the wind. It was not ever a consideration unless it was insane. And now I'm like, it's there's constantly days where I have to like, I feel like, man, I should take my flagpole down because it's going to go through my neighbor's truck window because yeah. it'll be howling for days. And as a guy, as someone who kayak fishes, it sucks. And and it yeah. sucks from a boat too, because you yeah. get rollers. And then on top, so you can, it's hard to use the electronics and focus. On top of that, mm-hmm. casting just sucks. It's yeah. horrible. You yeah. get set up and you're like, this is worthless. Yeah, that's I literally. A good point. Yeah, wind, wind sucks. Wind's probably the worst. 
Wind is I'd take, I'd take a cold, cold day with no wind over a windy, windy day. I'd take the Every- soaker where it's yeah. like hard to see. I'll take that yeah. over the wind. The, oh god. <laughs> That, every that, time that's wins. every time i've reached that point of like what the f like i need to leave it's been wind it's never been the cold like i'll stick it out for the cold even my feet go numb i'll stick it out i'll still fit i'll ice fish for 19 hours if i have to but like i'll, I'll stay out there wind no it was like the time we were on the st lawrence the first day was such a wake-up call i had to wear two coats because i didn't bring enough actual october layers. yeah Ooh, run two, october yeah. Yeah, that's a windy and cold time. Yeah. Okay. It felt like 45 miles an hour to the face, dude. Tears were just flying off of my eyes. <laughs> but I so caught like, a four and a half pounder in like the first hour. Yeah. So that day was yeah. fun for me. <laughs> awesome. Well, I caught um, mine the next day. <laughs> but all right. <laughs> when la- I felt better. Last question. So uh, worst mistake that you can make when you're getting out for like a full day of fishing? Like what's the in your planning, in your execution of going out for a full day, what is the one mistake that you would dread more than anything else? Uh, I mean, I've got two, like no toilet paper and no fish fighter. Haunted. Especially on a boat. Yeah. Oh my God, that'd be so horrible. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Both, no. actually, both things. <laughs> I, think, I think toilet paper. Having no toilet paper would be the worst. Bro, yeah. I tell you right now, not being able to get the morning deuce out before you go fishing, you just know you're asking, you're begging for trouble. You're like, please yeah. ruin it, my it, whole day. Anglers yeah. don't talk about that enough. There needs to be a really <laughs> good solution to that problem. <clears throat> like it is bad. Like it's bad. Like it's a real problem. The we, solution we have- is coffee that holds up a fork. That's the solution. You, you got to get up yeah, a little you, earlier. And you got to let it percolate. Brew. That that's the hard thing. I know that I need to get up earlier, and I still don't because I'm like I don't want to snooze. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I'm like, well, I guess my stomach's gonna be rumbly today. Uh, we got some answers on this one. We got forgetting your rods. We've got uh, drinking too hard the night before. uh, Eating greasy food. (laughs) Oh boy. You know, I mean, eating a pound of broccoli not very nice to the uh, the other anglers in the boat. And then getting water is a rough one. I don't like to do that. I. But mentally, I can overcome that. I like shade myself. I know I could like take it easy. Like, that's I'll be fine. Glass it freaks me out. A <laughs> bunch of fish yeah. hands pooping in the woods. <laughs> uh, Look, man, I like I, fish of has... thems. Fish of thems is probably my that might be my new the favorite coolest term. shit I've heard in a long time. <laughs> the the number of spots that we've pulled over like on a lake so when we fished in alabama paul had to pull off to like the worst possible spot it was horrible he couldn't even was... paddle his way to the side the boat was hung up it was, Brother, so I was mucky. Literally, like i was like uh one of those uh people over in whatever spain like pulling myself it was an this... island it so, was like, deserted there's probably like four 10 bears grand there. worth of know. electronics i'm just going into the mosquito jungle yeah. alone getting yeah. ready to pull my pants down yeah it wasn't great <laughs> not a good look <laughs> yeah yeah I, yeah i would definitely agree not getting the morning deuce out is like the well because like mistake. what's the solution you pull you, your off boat out there with island. a bunch of people like you need yeah. water you get some water you get some sunscreen you can go like you can find someone to hook you up Be like hey brother mm-hmm. with the other eighty thousand dollar bass boat can you help me out here for a second like you got you'll be all right you got the brotherhood <laughs> out there you got no, no one's pulling over to be like, oh, I'll hold the bucket. Like it's not. yeah, yeah. No, it's, Su- it's, sucks to suck, nerd. We're yeah, still fishing. Yeah. <laughs> you smell yeah. like ass, by the way. Yeah, yeah, dude. The worst of the worst was uh, I can't remember. It might have been a Wisconsin trip, but like didn't get the morning deuce out. Driving to the spot, ate like a uh, crunch wrap or something <laughs> like Taco Bell. <laughs> had a coffee. And then, like, we drove by the gas station. I just go, Paul, you turn. <laughs> we had to do a Yui and head back. Yeah, it was the ice fishing in uh, Wisconsin. Oh, yeah. I, right? recall, I, actually, was... I asked you. You said, no, I'm good. The Four s- seconds later. A millisecond we passed it. I was, it's like, ah. I was wrong. I, I was wrong. <laughs> turn around. <laughs> oh, God. All right. Awesome. Paul, did you throw one out there? Is that the same for you? No. Oh that's yeah, biggest no, mistake. that's mine. That's yeah, that's mine for sure. 100%. It's the management. 
Forgetting to change the batteries. Dude, the funny thing about this, Ooh. this is uh, DeBurley fished a tournament in Alabama with us. It was a team tournament. And uh, so many people had electronics issues that day. Like, my electronics were flickering and then wouldn't turn on. For the, It took me forever to figure out. Uh, I think DeBurley's battery died. He had to go get a new battery. We had a we had a dude with the main fishing with a hole in his boat. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and it was it was the pre-fishing day, so it was like, hey, thank goodness. And then I broke my boat at the end of the day. But you know what? It is what it is. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, you guys. Well, uh, we had a blast with this. Dan, thank you so much for being on with us, man, and dropping all the juice tournament tuned. Uh, right. If you guys are not checking out these products, obviously go check them out. <laughs> You can go on uh, LureNet, uh, Great Lakes Finesse has a website. You can check out their YouTube channel. Uh, where, where should everybody be following you, Dan? What, what should we be looking for right now? Uh, yeah, I mean, Instagram is is really like where like we started and we continue to really focus on that channel. So, um, yeah, I mean, not only can you like check out all the baits and the, and the stuff, you can connect with us there. That's probably the channel that we're most responsive to. So um we are always fielding questions so if you have any questions about line setup specific bait where like if you're going to a lake or whatever and you want to know what we think that you should be throwing like we're happy to help and um like really we're just trying to create connections with you guys and um and just help you become better anglers especially in this finesse style of fishing so um, that's the best spot instagram i mean we've got facebook and, and tiktok and stuff but um yeah, those are the best. That's the best spot. Instagram. Awesome. I love it. Well, you guys go check them out. Go give them a follow. Uh, and again, Dan, thank you so much for the hot tips tonight. Uh, you guys have been awesome in chat. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. We'll be back next Wednesday with uh, some sort of show that we'll probably put together at some point in time, Paul, right? Sure. Thanks, bro. We'll figure something out. We got some fishing to do. We got a lot of kayak builds to do. It is kayak season. I know a lot of you guys are getting on the water. You're getting your first fish of the year in. I'm stoked for you as well. So stay tuned. We'll catch you guys next week. Chaz takes out.